Today, we're going to look back at testimony by Senator Paul Rose on Senate Bill 1503, which originally sought to restore the right to carry firearms in Tennessee without it being a crime, to add long guns back into the permissible weapons list, and to bring our state into compliance with a federal court's ruling regarding the age at which those who can legally possess firearms may carry them for self-protection. Senator Rose testifies in committee that the Second Amendment is not unlimited by quoting a snippet from the recent Bruin case, a fact check, if you will. We have any other discussion? Senator Rose on the bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to read this. I, I know I have been, I've spoken to uh, folks on both sides of this issue. Uh, I'm very much a Second Amendment rights person. Uh, I probably have more guns than I'll, I'll ever need, and hopefully my grandson or someone will enjoy them someday. But Justice Thomas uh, delivered the, <clears throat> excuse me, the opinion of the court in the Heller decision, and this is what he said. <clears throat> he said, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, is not unlimited. From Blackstone through the 19th century cases, commentators and courts routinely explain that the right was not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatever purpose. I just think uh, like many of our constitutional rights, the right to speech, there are limits to what you can do and I appreciate the sponsor of the bill. Thank you. First, in the previous clip, the senator incorrectly stated that Justice Thomas delivered the opinion of the court in the Heller case. That was Chief Justice Scalia. I think that the senator meant to say Justice Thomas delivered the opinion of the court in the recent Bruin case, where he cherry-picked a single sentence from a full paragraph that needs to be put into correct context. The senator's recited portion from Justice Thomas, depicted in yellow, is nested in very important surrounding words that give it the true intended meaning. Justice Thomas was, in fact, referencing Heller in his opinion, which quoted Blackstone commentaries and the U.S. v. Miller case. The full text is as follows. After holding that the Second Amendment protected an individual right to armed self-defense, we also relied on the historical understanding of the amendment to demark the limits on the exercise of that right. We noted that, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. From Blackstone through the 19th century cases, commentators and courts routinely explain that the right was not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for whatever purpose. For example, we found it fairly supported by the historical tradition of prohibiting the carrying of dangerous and unusual weapons that the Second Amendment protects the possession and use of weapons that are in common use at the time. I am sure the Senator is not intentionally attempting to make Justice Thomas appear to be limiting the Second Amendment's stated purpose, to not infringe. It may be that the Senator needs more study on the matter. His feelings do not comport with the rulings of the court. Justice Thomas did say this in his opinion in Bruin, quoting from the McDonald case from 2010, the constitutional right to bear arms in public for self-defense is not a second-class right, subject to an entirely different body of rules than the other bills of rights guarantees. That is not how the First Amendment works when it comes to unpopular speech or the free exercise of religion. It is not how the Sixth Amendment works when it comes to a defendant's right to confront the witnesses against him. And it is not how the Second Amendment works when it comes to public carry for self-defense. I suggest a more thorough reading of the cases that affect Second Amendment rights, Heller, MacDonald, and now Bruin. If you liked what you saw and learned today, you can check back for more content that is forthcoming. You can find us at www.tennesseefirearms.com.
And to stay current with information about the state of your Second Amendment rights in Tennessee, be sure and hit the subscribe button on our website to receive free email updates on legislation and other important measures.